Discovery video 36. I'm here on the main page and we'll go ahead and log into the free area and uh, look for the, uh, the banner for the Discovery video series. In this video we're going to cover, uh, click on that banner by the way, um, we're going to cover in this video how to find the proper racist to play and more importantly how to find the one race to use as a find to find one key horse in the pick three and pick four that's has a good chance to win at high odds that's this that's the key to um getting a big a big pick four payoff is we must single one horse and that single has to be good odds and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, right here on that page where all the like I showed you um, from your free digest page click on the banner all view all discovery videos and then under the uh, red arrow here I have the listing a value odds and overlay preferred races these are the races that I follow I have a better than average chance on getting a high priced or value odds winner in these races uh, so my many years of research I have proven uh, new to the group is uh, all non graded stakes and grade 3 races uh, next up is maiden claiming races notice I have four stars there I'll talk about that in a minute Maiden special weight, claiming races with a condition, like a non-winner's condition. You'll see the CLM, the claiming price, and then a bunch of numbers and letters. It's a claiming condition, conditional claimer. Bottom and low-level claimers, these are your five to $10,000 claimers. Maybe at your world-class tracks uh, on the way up to 15 to 20. Places like Woodbine, Keeneland, Santa Anita, Belmont, Saratoga, Churchill. All races run on the turf. This would be all turf races. And all races run over a wet track. Now, of this group, there's two situations in which are considered stronger uh, amongst this group here. There's a subgroup that's stronger. And that would be your rate... A, your races that have the four star ratings. That would be uh, main claiming races and conditional claimers. And B, any race that qualifies for more than one condition. And usually what you'll have is it'll be a turf race and a claiming condition or it'll be a turf race and a maiden special weight okay or it'll be you know sloppy and anything you know as long as you have two of these conditions okay uh, we have two any race that fits into two of these categories and also these two categories with the four stars um, actually in maiden claiming I should make five stars but they're both pretty solid uh, but this is where the money is. This is where the betting public makes mistakes. And the uh, betting favorite frequently does not win. Uh, and usually, a lot of times, doesn't even finish in the money. Okay? Now, take a look at... Uh, we're here on a Tuesday. I'm at Presque Isle Downs, the all-weather surface. You, know, you don't have much to choose from on Tuesday, but I'm going to show you that gold can be found... And diamonds can be mined even on a slow Tuesday. Okay. Most every tracks that have a pick four, they'll have like an early pick four, first of all. Like the first four races. Okay. Um, notice that I've highlighted that the second race here is a maiden claiming 40,000. That's a four star race. Remember I showed you on the previous page. Now the first race is a maiden special weight. 
that is a preferred race. We've got two value odds horses in there. Okay, it's a preferred race. And the second race, like I showed you, is a maiden claiming race. That is a four star race. The best of the best. And in here, we have one value odds horse. That horse is a first time starter. And we have a lot of success with our first time starter angle. And the betting public does not like to bet first-time starters. It's something in the psychology. Well, it's the unknown. Most horse players really don't know what to do with first-time starters. Okay, But we've got um, a proven strategy for these. And I'll uh, get on with that in a minute. Your next race is... A claiming 5,000 conditional. Okay. And there's a value odd source in there. And the fourth race and final race of the pick four. It's a preferred race, but there is no value odd source. Okay. So we must narrow it down. Keep in mind now, we're trying to find a single for the pick three and pick four. Okay, so that would have to be either Barry Delight here in the third, because it's a conditional claimer, or the first time starter in the maiden claiming race, number five, Concord's Dancer. Now, this the bit of information I'm going to tell you next is very important. I'm going to repeat what I said about first time starters. You are likely to get very good odds, extremely good odds, on first-time starters that we have listed as a value odds horse, okay, in, and keep in mind, we've already narrowed it down to the race. We're in a four-star uh, maiden claiming race, preferred claiming, maiden claiming. So the first time starters, the betting public, psychologically, they don't like the bet because of the obvious reason, the horse has not run a race yet. And most players don't really have an idea of what to do with first time starters, except for they can look and see if the horse has a bullet workout, meaning the horse ran a fast workout. Well, let me tell you something. Any thoroughbred can run a fast workout. Me, at 50 pounds overweight on a good morning and enough coffee, I can run a pretty good workout. Any thoroughbred can run a bullet or a fast workout. Okay, That's why there is no value in a horse that has a bullet workout. I mean, if there is value, it's always nice to have a bonus, but that is basically where the betting public stops. They don't know where to go from there. Um, this horse, if he did have a bullet work, would have a workout icon. But like I said, those are bonuses if you see them. Now, one of the reasons that we uh, have Concord's Dancer picked up here, uh, 10 to 1 morning line, 4 to 1 true odds. Okay, And remember, as we're playing the pick 4, we're not going to know anything except for what I'm showing you here. But uh, if you look down here, there's there's uh, three first-time starters in the race, and the five is the only one that qualifies. And one of the reasons is, I've highlighted why, the workout points is a rating of 105. Now, that rating has nothing to do with the speed of the workouts. It has to do with the pattern of workouts and the distance of workouts. It's nothing to do with the time, the speed, or final time of the works. Betting public totally dismisses this whole piece of information that's like, in my opinion, a, just a gold mine. Okay. Now, workout points rating of 100 would be my perfect pattern. But anything, anything 90 and up 
means that there's a steady pattern of work. So we're at 105. I, I really like to see that on a first-time starter. That's one one of the things that makes uh, our first-time starters the value odds plays. Okay, and like I said, uh, because the betting public does not know what to do with first-time starters. They're very reluctant to bet them, especially a horse like this, who does not have any fast workout times. Uh, if the horse did have fast workout times, you would see that gray workout icon, okay? And like I said, if you do see the gray workout icon, consider it a bonus, because pretty much every handicapper knows how to, how to find a fast workout, so it's not really valuable information. Keep in mind, we're trying to use information the betting public, the majority of them, are not using so that we have an advantage over them. And when we have an advantage over the betting public majority, we have an advantage in the odds. And that's what it takes to make money in this game. For this reason, I propose that number five, Concord's Dancer, of the two horses that we are considering to single, The other one being Barry Delightful, who has raced several times and has a lot of information, has a hot jockey, and that could mean the the betting public, you know, I mean, they're wise to hot jockeys. Uh, if you were to look at the situation here, uh, you would say uh, this horse is probably going to get a little money at the windows, okay? Especially with the hot jock. Everybody at the track knows who the hot jockeys are. Even the guy who's just holding a program and nothing else. Or or, you, or the guy that just watches the looks at the results in a newspaper knows the jockeys that are hot. So that's, you know, there's going to be money sent in this horse's direction. So of the two horses that we've narrowed it down to, I absolutely pick Con Concord's Dancer for the reasons that I told you. Being the first-time starter, the betting public reluctant to bet first-time starters, and not having a fast workout, pretty much the betting public is at a loss from there. If the first-time starter has no fast workouts, the betting public is not going to bet this horse. And as it turns out, they didn't. Um, even though the morning line, uh, he was 10 to 1, he was actually let go at 15 to 1. So he floated up from morning line. Um... So, uh, but, you know, this is something that I'm forecasting, okay, and I'm showing you how I do it. So, the pick four starts, obviously, in race one, okay? We have our single, Concord's Tune, or um, Concord's Dancer, who is by Sire Concord's Tune. So, the other three races, okay, we have a pick four starting here. When we have your uh, single... In the pick four, or the pick three, in the other races, in the other two races of the pick three, or the other three races of the pick four, do you want to guess on what horses we're going to put together with our one single at high odds? You don't even have to look at the races, because once we've found our single, once we have determined that we're on the right horse to single, the other races of the pick three and pick four has already been decided for us on who we're going to play. You're going to play the group A horses. And group A in every race is the top four picks. So we're going to take Concord's Dancer as the single and what we are, what we are calculating and predicting to be a high odds uh, horse that has a very good chance to win in, in our opinion, based on our long-term research. And that's being the single. You want to have a single with high odds in a pick three and pick four. And the reason being is most of the players like to find that quote-unquote sure bet, sure thing at four to five odds to single in the pick three and pick four. And that, to me, makes no sense. That's like saying, okay, if I could just get one horse home, on top, maybe I can hit the pick four. That's 
like, you know, that's batting way out of the batter's box. You're not giving yourself any advantage with that. Every player at the track is going to have the four to five shot. And they're all going to have that horse in the pick four. So even if the horse does win and a million things can go wrong in a horse race, but let's just say the four to five shot does win, everybody at the track is going to have that horse live in the pick three and pick four. So what's it going to pay? I mean, what are we chasing here? What are we What are we gambling to achieve? I mean, do we really want to invest money to, to cash a, a 60 or an $80 pick four? To me, that's ridiculous. I mean, if I'm playing a pick four, it's to score. And everything that I play is to score. I'm not here for nickels and dimes. I'm not at the nickel slot machines, all right? That's, I don't do that. I figure, you know, in my philosophy, if you're going to gamble, it, you know, use a proven way and a strategy. Have a strategy ahead of time, sort of like a general who goes to war. Do you think he leads his troops to battle without some kind of plan? Of course not. They'd get totally annihilated if there was no plan. The general leads his troops, has a plan of attack. He still may lose. But you have a much better chance on winning if you have a plan for everything. So, Concord's Dancer is the single... In the other races of the pick three and pick four, we're going to just play the group A horses. We keep it simple. That's the strategy that works. I can't tell you, I've lost count on how many big pick fours that that strategy has worked for, for me. Um, and it, you know, like I said, all my research that dates back 16 years has proven and it's gotten me to the, what I teach in these videos is the result of 16 years worth of research, long hours every single day. All right, I think you follow where I'm going. So we got our pick four bet in. We got the group A with Concord's tune. I keep saying Concord's tune, that's actually the sire. So it just shows you how long I've been around the game. I, I start calling horses by their sire's name. Um, Concord's Dancer. All right, and we've covered how we came to find the race four star maiden claiming preferred four star we've discussed why we think that concord's dancer is a good bet we've also discussed that we have a, why we think the, that the horse will go off at good odds and so that's how we came up with that horse being our single you see the the bird even likes that you hear him Okay, Bird's real excited about Concord's Dancer. He usually starts chattering when he hears me talking. He's not my bird, but a bird. Anyway, and no, I'm not at a, I'm not at a zoo. Uh, okay, back at focus, what we're doing here. So we're playing Concord's Dancer, a single in the pick four and the pick three with the Group A horses, which is the top four picks in every race. Now, as far as this particular race in general, we have a strategy that we use as the same no matter what. Uh, as far as playing this race here, the second race, we'll look and see uh, near post time, Concord's Dancers, 15 to 1 or right around there. Yeah, absolutely good odds for us. So we'll go ahead and make the bets on this particular race as well. First is $10 to win. Um, we got to get the win bet down first. Before, even if we're going to play exotic wagers, we must get the win bet in. Some people play only to win, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And essentially, a pick three and a pick four is a multiple race win wager anyway. All right, so we're going to get our $10 to win down. And if we have money to play more exotics, my next bet in line is I like to wheel the exacta with my high odds horse. So I'm going to go a five all exacta for two bucks. And if we have bankroll to play the trifecta, it'll be as follows. I play the five on top. The bird agrees. Single on the five on top. Second position of the trifecta. Nine. Two. Three. Six. So the rest of group A. And the top horse in group B. In the second position of the trifecta. And then all 
for third. And we have five on top. The second position, nine, two, three, six, and all for third. And if it's a 10 cent superfecta, all for fourth. Okay? In order to be able to get these big scores, we must isolate singles at high odds. And we've done that here with this horse in the pick four. This is also part of pick three, so we've done that there as well. And we've isolated Concord's Dancer with win bets, exactas, uh, trifecta, keyed on top. I mean, when you do it, you do it. You do it with confidence, and you do it the right way. Okay, now, the reason I'm covering the topic here, and the bird's getting excited again, I think you might notice that pick four wagers, if you compare our sequence of pick threes and pick fours, um, look at the payouts, if you haven't already noticed this take a sequence of races that has both a pick three and a pick four existing within the same sequence of races. Look at the payouts on the pick fours compared to what the payout is on the pick three. And I, you will find at most tracks, you know, the majority of the time that pick four, which is just one extra race in which you need, you need, the, you need the horse. One extra race, and you're looking at a heck of a lot more money on the payouts on a pick four. This is probably why they're one of the most popular wagers now. If not the most popular wager, along with win bets and exactus. Okay? All right. Bets are in. Let me first tell you in the first race, um, we had Group A, so... And we recovered. We got Brooklyn's image. Top pick was the winner. It's value odds horse. Actually, we had a value odds exacta here. It finished 9-2. Okay. And uh, all, oh, yeah, doubles. I forgot the doubles. Daily doubles. Uh, not only do I wheel exactas, I wheel doubles. So I have an all five double coming into this race. And if it was a rolling double then I'd have a five four a five all going out okay all right so we had a, we had our top pick uh, value odds horse win the first race we had all of group a in the pick three and pick four and we had a wheel and a double then in the second race Concord's dancer did not disappoint look at this even lost position there and came back that's a game horse uh, for a maiden claimer. Odds finally uh, just under 16 to 1. 33.40 on the win mutual there. We had a $10 win ticket. We got the exacta for 143. Our strategy collected the trifecta. But this is chump change. A 10 cent super. Chump change compared to we had the group A winner in the next race. And the Group A winner in the fourth race. So what have we done? We've hit the pick three and the pick four. And let me move this bar. Look at the payouts. These are dollar payouts. 373.30 on the pick three. Races two, three, and four. Races one, two, three, and four, in which we had two value odds horses in the sequence that won. Look what it paid. $8,862 for a dollar. And you see how we methodically did all this. So we must be methodical. Where am I? Here I am. We must be methodical and we must have a plan for everything. Um, pick three, pick four, and uh, the returns from our winner. And I'm not even counting the value odds horse in the first race in its total. There was, yeah, there was a, well, there was a $400 early double there, value odds double. But ten $10,260.61 $10, $10, $10, $10, because we had that, we caught that dollar pick four for eight grand using my strategy. Okay. 
And that's how we play all of them, the same way. Um, this video was basically showing you how to isolate races, isolate horses, and put wagers together. I do want to mention in closing about bankroll management. Very important piece of the puzzle. About 90% of the players, I would venture to say, do not pay any attention to bankroll management. That has to do with the percentage of your bankroll that you bet in each race. Now, first of all, you establish your horse racing bankroll. This is money you set aside for horse racing. Obviously, it's not money meant to pay bills with, etc. Money you set aside for horse racing. Whatever that amount is, is your bankroll. Now, of that bankroll, you want to bet a maximum on any given race, and hopefully you're following preferred races, but on any given race, you want to bet a maximum of 1% of that bankroll, possibly up to 2%. The reason being is the way to long-term profit in this game is big hits, okay? And uh, in order to get from one big hit to the next big hit, we must properly manage our bankroll. And the 1% max works because you virtually have no chance on losing your bankroll or tapping out if you stick to the 1% rule. If a guy's got 100 bucks and he's betting $20 a race, well, guess what? Um, he might go to the five races and not hit, and he, might have, he would have hit big on the sixth race because that's how horse racing works. So, you know, we we got to be very, very um, planned out as far as our bankroll management in order to make it from the 10000 here. And, you know, as you can see, there's uh, your returns, uh, th uh, 3700 there, 2500 there, Belmont, 2700 uh, 9000 here, okay, Belmont again, uh, 4000 um, you know, 3,000, 8,000 at Hollywood Park. Okay, you add up all those big hits, and at the end of the year, you made a long term profit. That's how it's done. It cannot be achieved by trying to grind out a few bucks in each race. It's a good theory, and it's a nice little dream that every horse player has. I'm going to make $20 a race, and I'm going to bet 10 races at one track, and I'm going to make $20 a race. Just the odds, okay? This is an odds game. The odds rule this game as far as mathematics are concerned. I don't like to quantify horses, but when it comes to math, math belongs being applied to odds because odds are numbers. Horses are not numbers. Horses are not mathematical at all. But the odds are. And so if we, if we interpret the odds and the chance and the risk as math and a science, which is what they are, they're numbers. The odds are in a direct correlation of what's being offered versus what's the actual, you know, we want to get a better chance to win than the odds are being offered. That's why I focus on overlays, okay? But... Uh, one of my famous sayings that I like to say a lot is this is a numbers game in that the odds are the numbers. Okay, so the odds on betting 10 races at one track and making 20 bucks a race, you might as well play the lotto. I mean, you know, I think your odds are about the same there. I mean, yeah, you may have, that may happen to you once or a couple times, but it's just, you can't just, you know, dribble drabble on the nickel slots. You got to go for the big ones, the big hits. And you get there, like I said, by managing your bankroll, okay? All of this stuff I'm talking about and I'm repeating for you is the end result of a long time of research and testing. I've tested everything. I've tested literally everything that can happen in horse racing. I have tested year after year after year, starting from 1995 working every day uh, a light day for me is 12 hours I usually put in 18 hours a day so, I mean this is the end result of all of that I have come up with these not only these videos here 
but also in the previous series. Okay, be before the Discovery series, there was right here. Uh, look for the laptop computer. On this is the free page again. There's 424 videos in this series. 424. And basically, the Discovery series is just an extension of this series. It's just covering more detail. Okay, so you've got 424 videos here, uh, all showing you exactly what I do in, in every imaginable situation you could ever encounter. Uh, so I encourage you to watch, to use these as your library, okay? This page is here as your library. You can come in, it's free anytime, do your research. And everything you need is here. Well, that's the previous series. 424 videos, and we're up to what? Video 35, 36 on the Discovery. So we're over 450 videos. Well on our way to 500 videos. That's a lot of videos. Um, and it's all great library material for you and research for you. Uh, and like I said, it's the end result of a lot of work. So I did the work for you. And of course, I use these reports. Um, have to use something, and uh, in my opinion, um, developing the reports was just as important as how to use them. Okay, because I've seen I've seen a lot of good handicappers in my day, but a, a lot of those same guys and ladies didn't make a profit. There's a lot of handicappers that are good that just can't seem to generate profit, and I've seen good money managers that didn't know a lot about handicapping make money. So then you take a guy that know or a lady that can have some good handicapping and applies a bankroll management strategy and that's a long term profitable horse player. And we do it the simple way. We believe in simple, it works. Okay, I'm really rambling on here. Creeping up to thirty two minutes, so uh we'll let you go on that note. Thank you very much for viewing and good luck with all your bets.